and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the, the friars and the sisters uh, celebrate a general office. This means uh, this, the office of the dead which the friars pray today in this holy mass. We pray for our deceased friars, sisters, relatives, and benefactors. When we pray for the dead, we want to reflect a moment about the reality of purgatory, a truth of faith revealed by God, which is nowadays often doubted and neglected. When we speak about this argument, we need to reflect of about three things. First, what purgatory actually is, and thus, what the reality of sin and its consequences are. Second, what we can and should do for the souls in purgatory. And third, what the holy souls can do for us. Let us consider a moment the first point. We need to bear in mind two principles. First, that every sin, especially mortal ones, but also venial sins, offend God and cause a damage both in our relation with God as well as into the spiritual communion which ties us together with all other baptized souls. And second, that nothing unclean can enter into the glory of heaven. Sin is in its very essence an offense against God and has also a negative influence on our neighbor because we are all joined to one another in what is called the communion of saints as we profess it in the creed. Every act of virtue which we do has a beneficent effect on the whole church, while our sins do the contrary. Every sin has its consequence, beside the guilt, which is forgiven in confession, as temporal punishment, which needs to be repaired in this life or in the other life. Nothing unclean can enter into heaven, since God is the holiest of holy, nothing unclean, nothing which is not holy, can be in his presence in paradise. This is why, before being able to go to heaven, we need to be cleansed from our sins and its consequences. We need to have made reparation and satisfaction to the divine justice for the sins we have committed and expiated the temporal punishments due to them. The problem is that only very few people die in such a holy state that they can go to heaven straight away after death. Most of us, when we die, have still something which needs to be repaired, some sin which needs to be expiated. This is why our good God has invented purgatory. If it wouldn't exist, if after death a deceased could go only directly to heaven or to hell, very few people would be saved, because few at the moment of their death are already completely cleansed and holy enough to go directly to heaven. Therefore, we have to thank, to thank the Divine Mercy for having invented purgatory, which is a place where we can repair for our sins, even after death, before in the, death, in the end going to heaven. This reparation in this place of purification is although very painful. Its pain surpasses in its intensity every suffering which we can even imagine here on earth. This is why we should make reparation for our sins already now, while we are still in this life, so that we may have no need to go to this place. This we can do, for example, perform, performing acts of charity, works of penance, or obtaining indulgences. What we can do for the souls in purgatory? The souls in purgatory cannot help themselves in any way. They have to suffer there for the time which God has established when he has judged them. However, we can help them. Blessed Eugene Smith said, Imagine if one of our little friends was sitting behind the locked door in prison, and it would be in my power to open it 
and to free her from prison. If she saw me chasing butterflies, enjoying myself and walking indifferently past the door, instead of getting her out, what a grief that would cause her. Well, this is what the souls in purgatory suffer when their friends forget them. And another blessed, blessed Anna Katharina Emmerich stated, it is sad how little help is given to the holy souls, yet their misery is so great and they cannot help themselves. However, if someone prays for them, suffers something for them, gives alms for them, they benefit immediately. They are then as happy, as blessed, as a thirsty person who is given a fresh drink. No good thought, no sincere wish that a living person has for the poor souls remains without effect. And yet, how few take care of them. There are many ways in which we can help these poor souls and let them go quicker to heaven where they ardently wish to go. In a vision of purgatory, Saint Sister Faustina asked the holy souls what their greatest suffering was. In one voice they answered that it is their longing for God. The holy soul's greatest plan is the loss of the sight of God. They met Jesus already at their particular judgment. Now they long to behold his face forever. The most efficacious means of all to help them out is to let holy masses be celebrated for them, in which the infinite merits of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross are applied to them. Then also we should pray the Holy Rosary for them, obtain indulgences for them, and much more. Our Lord also said to the saintly nun, Man Mariana Lindmeyer, as she accounts, I should take a certain virtue every week and practice it inwardly and outwardly, but turn the merit of these acts to the holy souls, through the hands of Our Lady, O my holy guardian angel. For example, exercise the virtue of humility to those souls who suffer in purgatory because of their pride, because they have not practiced this virtue much enough. The, it is through humility that one can help the holy souls very much, much more than through other heavy penances. And again she says, by looking at their mistakes, I have been taught to avoid them. They have reminded me of my exercises in virtue and have always encouraged to me to help them. In this way of helping the holy souls, one reaches perfection and true virtue most quickly. And in the end, what they can do for us. The holy souls in purgatory can do nothing for themselves, but they can do a lot for us. They have a great intercessory power and can obtain graces from us and once freed from their captivity in this place of expiation and gone to heaven, they will even be more active in obtaining graces and God's mercy for us. Just imagine when one day you die and you have to present yourself at the judgment seat of God. All these souls who because of your prayers and sacrifices have been freed from purgatory and have gone to heaven will be there and will speak up for you. They will say that what they owe to you, so that your own judgment will be much milder than, than what it could be like, because of the charity which you had toward, towards these souls. Let us ask then Our Lady of Suffrage that she may teach us an ardent love, according to the example of her Immaculate Heart, for the holy souls in purgatory and a great zeal to succor them. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.